Hi and welcome to A British Audiophile and if you don't know me already my name is Taron and welcome to my review of the NAD M10 streaming amplifier. Am I the only person who still calls this NAD? Most people refer to it as NAD but old habits die hard and this is a 2200 pound class D streaming amplifier. Do you hear that noise? It's a whole bunch of audiophiles clicking the off button. There's still this prejudice out there that Class D amplifiers can't sound any good. Well, those of you still watching will know that this is a well-regarded, well-reviewed amplifier. So let's see if it's any good. There's a lot packed into this attractive looking unit, measuring just 215 millimeters wide, 100 millimeters high, and 260 millimeters deep, weighing in at five kilograms. Inside is a 100 watt per channel Class D Hypex Encore amplifier module designed by Bruno Puzzi. More on that later. Also, there's a DAC centered around the ESS Sabre 9028 chip. It can play PCM files up to 192 kilohertz and 32 bit resolution. But DSD is only supported if it's been converted to PCM first, and that can only be done using the desktop versions of the app. To take advantage of the streamer inbuilt into the NAD M10, you have to download the Blue OS app from NAD's sister company, Blue Sound. It's a very slick and intuitive app in its operation, more so than my Lightning DS app on my Aurelic Ares Mini that has a lag and seems more clunky in its operation. There are versions of the app for Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac OS. Blue Sound supports the usual streaming culprits, plus a whole host of other streaming services, some of which I've never heard of. It can work as part of a multi-room, multi-zone music system, either directly through Blue OS, or as part of the Rune music management software, if you subscribe to the Rune service, where it can function as a Rune endpoint. You can also stream to the device via AirPlay or Bluetooth aptX HD. In fact, it will Bluetooth in both directions, allowing you to use it with Bluetooth headphones. You can voice control the device inside the Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant app. And it will support Siri Voice Assistant via AirPlay 2. If that isn't enough, you can integrate it into a whole host of smart home systems as part of your lighting, heating, security. You get the picture. On the back, there's a fairly decent array of connections two RCA analog inputs, pre-outs to connect to an external power amplifier if you choose, dual sub-outs, that's great for music enthusiasts, connecting two smaller subwoofers is more advisable than one larger one. There's a coaxial and optical digital input, HDMI arc input for easy connection to home cinema systems or just to connect to a TV. There's a LAN connection so you can have a wired network connection to your router, but the M10 will stream wirelessly. You can also bridge the amplifier to run it in mono mode and have more power, but as far as I'm aware, there's no matching power amplifier to run the other channel. There's a lot of nice touches that really enhance your user experience with this amplifier. From the way that the NAD logo embedded in the scratch-resistant Gorilla Glass turns from red to white when powered up, to how clearly the seven inch color screen displays cover art. The touch screen that dominates the front display allows you to access a variety of features and the volume control is pretty slick. When cover art is not being displayed, the front displays VU or more accurately peak level meters. Again, it's just a really nice touch that enhances the user experience. To access the full gamut of features, you need to use the Blue OS app. There are too many features for me to describe here, but here are some of the highlights. There are tone controls, crossover point adjustments for better subwoofer integration. You can also control the brightness of the LCD display. And although the M10 doesn't come with a remote control, it has an IR learning function where you can assign various functions from spare buttons of other remotes that you may have lying around. This compact little unit also features Dirac Live Room Correction. As the name suggests, it compensates for acoustic inadequacies in your listening environment. 
It's only the LE version of Dirac Live that we have here and it operates within the 20 hertz to the 500 hertz region. But that's where most of the acoustic problems lie in any case. And for those who are concerned and consider that not to be adequate, you can pay $99 to Dirac Live and upgrade to the full version. To access the feature, you have to download NAD's customized version of the Dirac app onto your device. Then plug in the supplied Dirac calibrated mic into the USB connection at the back of the M10. And you have to follow a series of instructions, which involves selecting a wide or a narrow listening position, taking a series of measurements. It then runs a frequency sweep for each measurement. The resulting filter corrects for amplitude, that's frequency response, and phase and impulse response. That's basically timing information. With a press of a button, the filter is exported to the M10. Right, so I'm gonna keep this section short and sweet because this video is gonna be long enough anyway. A whole bunch of NAD's more affordable amplifiers, for example, the C338 that I reviewed, the C368, the C388, all use Hypex UCD amplifier modules that were developed by Bruno Putzi. He then went on to refine the design in the Encore modules, and that's what NAD use in their master series, and the M10 is part of that master series, and that's what we have here. There were three main areas where Bruno improved the amplifier module circuit. The first was a new comparator circuit that lowered distortion. The second was a new gate drive circuit, which effectively improved the open loop distortion. Now that's the distortion before negative feedback is applied. Class D amplifiers by their very nature require a large amount of negative feedback. And that's one of the reasons why they get a bad rap from audiophiles because it's considered that high amounts of negative feedback have an adverse effect on sound quality. Well, not according to Bruno Putzi. He thinks it's a field that's widely misunderstood, but I'm not gonna get into that now. The third area of improvement was that he effectively improved the open loop gain by about 20 dB. The upshot of all these changes is that the Encore module compared to the UCD module has lower distortion, so better clarity. It also has a lower output impedance. Another way of describing that is a higher damping factor, which means that it has better control over the drivers, especially the woofer at low frequencies. And the third thing that it has is better load invariance. Load invariance means that the tonality of the amplifier changes less as the load of the speaker changes. I'm gonna compare the NAD M10 to the Hegel H95 that I recently reviewed. I spent quite a bit of time with both amplifiers doing an AB comparison. Now it's not quite a fair fight. The M10 retails for 2,200 pounds, the H95, 1,500 pounds, but the M10 does have quite a few more features. So perhaps the disparity isn't quite as great as it first appears. The M10 is quite a bit cleaner in its presentation than the Hegel H95. You get this sense that it digs deeper into recording, pulling off more information. And this is partly because it has a blacker background. So naturally details shine through a little bit more easily. And it also contributes to the reason why the M10 has a deeper sound stage. Bass control is good on the Hegel H95, but it's a different level on the M10. Bass is faster, it's tighter, and it also hits harder, which gives the M10 a more dynamic presentation. If you want to test the bass performance of your system to see how fast, how extended it is, and the variation in tonality, a great album to try out is Ernest Ranglin's Below the Bass Line. It's a jazz reggae fusion, and there isn't a bad track on there. The clarity of the M10 carries through into the mid-range performance, Leading edges of notes are extremely well etched and decay structures are a little bit more present than they are on the Hegel H95. But this is where the H95 punches back a little bit. It has a tonality that's extremely well judged. Doesn't matter what instrument you throw at it, the H95 produces it naturally. 
That isn't quite the case with the M10. It's a little leaner in comparison. Now, there's a reason I use flamenco sketches of Miles Davis' kind of blue album as one of my judges of tonality in the mid-range. It has three instruments that are notoriously difficult to reproduce. A saxophone, a trumpet, and a grand piano. On the M10, the saxophone and the trumpet don't quite have the same texture and richness of tone that they do have on the H95. And Bill Evans on grand piano sounds a little less grand. The high frequencies on the H95 are again pretty much faultless at this price. In comparison, they're slightly more elevated on the M10. It gives the M10 a more detailed presentation, just means that you have to be a little bit more cautious if you've got speakers that are on the bright side. Now I know what I'm gonna get in the comments section from traditional audio files here. Typical class D amplifier, strong in the bass, a little low in the mids, a little boosted up in the highs. What I should mention is that I'm talking about relatively subtle differences between the tonality of the two amplifiers here. And I don't think it's the Class D modules that are the culprit. I connected my Chord Mojo DAC to the analog input of the M10 and that leanness in the mid-range disappeared. But I should also mention, I'm not sure if I said that right, I might keep that in though. I should mention that there was a little drop in fidelity when using the analog input. And I suspect it's because the analog input has to be converted to digital to run through the DSP engine and then converted back to analog again. I've covered quite a bit of the setup of the NAD M10 already in this video, so I'm just gonna summarize here. You have to download the Blue OS app on whatever device you're gonna use in conjunction with the NAD M10. And then you also have to download the custom NAD version of the Dirac Live room correction software on that same device to utilize that feature. You then have to connect the M10 to your network either wirelessly or through the wired connection and then add your streaming services. In terms of driving speakers, this amplifier is remarkably good at driving tricky speakers. My Pryak Response 1 SEs, when I combined that with the Hegel H95, I felt they lacked a little bit of grip and control. That wasn't the case with the M10. It drove them fine. In fact, the Proax are a touch on the warm side of neutral, made a very nice tonal balance with the M10. I also tried it with my PSB Imagine Minis and the Amphion Argon 1 speakers that I recently had here for review. Both of those speakers are easier to drive than my Proax Response 1 SCs. They're also a touch on the lean side of neutral, and so is the M10. The combination's fine for people who want a very fast, very clean type of presentation, but others will feel that it lacks a little bit of warmth. I also tried the M10 with the Acoustic Energy A300s that I recently had here for review. Now that's a speaker that does have the warmth to balance out the tonality of the M10, but it lacks the transparency really to get the best out of this unit. The final combination that I tried was the Bukar S400s that you see behind me on the stands. Now the Bukar S400s are more transparent than the AE300s and they have the richness of tone and the warmth to nicely balance out the sound. It's the kind of speaker that I'd look to partner with this unit. <sighs> Quite a bit to cover in this review. Note to self, don't review another one of these fully featured all-in-one units for a while. All joking aside, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with the NAD M10. What's not to like? A great little compact little unit with a great form factor that's ideally suited to modern living. In fact, a number of people are gonna be quite happy replacing their entire hi-fi rig with this little box. It's packed full of really useful features and the user interface is quite frankly sublime. It points the way in which hi-fi may go in the future. But ultimately, this is a hi-fi review channel and I have to judge this unit on sound quality. And it sounds great in lots of ways, but it does have that slight leanness in the mid-range, which means you have to be a little bit particular about the speakers you partner with it. Also, through the analog connections, the fidelity drops down from very good to something 
above average. And for those two particular reasons, I'm pulling it back from outstanding to a highly recommended. But for the right kind of user, with the right kind of speakers, I don't think there's anything quite comparable. So that's it for my review of the M10. Please like this video if you like it, please share it. And if you like what I do with this channel, please think about subscribing. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.